years ago when I began this study and this research and examination of timing and with hitting and how a hitter fits in with the pitcher's delivery, the vocabulary I used was flow of energy. I looked how the, the, the batter's flow of energy was moving, how he gathered himself, how he collected himself, and how that assimilated with the pitcher's delivery. You know, right now you're watching a batter who has a, um, a collection of energy. Mainly this flow of, flow of energy is being gathered with his hands. There's a little rocking action with his body. But watch his hands, how he's using his hands to get in sync with the pitcher. The issue is it's not in sync with the pitcher and his delivery. He'll just, he shows you a little soft, weak pop-up behind the second baseman's head and doesn't drive the ball. So if you look at it again, watch how he bounces his hands and it's not in sync with the pitcher's delivery. The pitcher has a common denominator and I've learned through a lot of examinations it's not from his release point. There's another place in the pitcher's delivery as a hitter we need to assimilate ourselves with. Once we understand that place we're in. It's just like collecting yourself to jump into a pool for a big splash contest. You know, there comes a timing when you run up and jump off the edge of the poolside into the pool. When you time yourself correctly and gather yourself and jump in, you're in. There's no extra thinking about it. Everyone goes about their game um, basically according to their own athletic DNA. Everyone has their own athletic disposition. And as coaches, we better serve our players when we are in touch with that player's athletic disposition, his DNA. This player wants to gather himself together with his hands and he has a little bit of a crouch when he's trying to pull himself together to get ready to collect energy. This is what, what timing is about. And um, in my video series, I give you point after point of detail to detail, how to not, not just how to recognize these points, but how to teach this particular hitter how to fit in and assimilate with the pitcher so that he reaches maximum alertness just before the ball is, is pitched. So the rhythm and how a hitter collects himself is what I've termed a hitting additive. It's a way of, you know, not just standing at home plate perfectly still, but it's a way how you, you get your body collected together. That's the additive. Some people rock their hands, some people rock front and back, some people toe tap, but that additive is where we need to be sensitive when we're helping the players. This player's, his additive and how he collects himself, it's out of sync. And if we're going to help him, uh, we need to be sensitive to that. And when it's out of sync, we just judge his hitting and says, well, he's not getting his hips through, his hands are late, he's casting out. But you see, we got to recognize what happened before all the mechanical movements was that he just wasn't in sync with the pitcher. And because he wasn't in sync with the pitcher, he had to swing from desperation. I got to hurry up to get this bad hit down to that strike zone because I'm not in sync. Some of you who may be watching this, who or who are astute coaches and and are you know examiners of hitting, you may just say to yourself, "Well, hey Dave, you know what? He's just not getting his foot down." Well, that may be the case, you know, and getting the foot down to me is just a generic phrase. There's a lot more involved than just getting the foot down. It, the timing runs a lot deeper. The layers are a lot, lot deeper. Um, this hitter's close. He's just basically 
If I was working with him, I would tell him, first off, he's one second behind. One second behind a pitcher's common denominator. Let's work on that, and we'll watch the balls fly. Bring it in. Every series is as thrilling today as it was when it first came to the board back in 1992. 